Okay, so I think uh, we need to wait for the presentation of coaching. So we will start with our second speaker, San Sandra Fronich from uh, the University of Manchester, the uh, graphene, National Graphene Institute, telling us about how the lateral dimensions of graphene can affect their oxidative stress. Thank you very much for this introduction. I would also like to thank to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to present my work. So today I will talk about cellular responses to graphene oxide, especially about the effect of lateral dimensions and the induction of intracellular oxidative stress. So to begin with, a few words about graphene and graphene-based materials. So graphene has been isolated and characterized by two scientists at the University of Manchester back in 2004. So for this discovery, later on, they received the Nobel Prize. And uh, since uh, the isolation and characterization of this material, it has been studied a lot and uh, many exciting applications have been foreseen. So graphene oxide uh, belongs to the group of graphene-related materials, and it has oxygen-containing functional groups on the surface. So this Functional groups are actually giving many also potential, uh, potentially uh, exciting applications to this material. This is a large surface for functionalization, very good dispersibility in aqueous solutions, and uh, also uh, potential for different covalent functionalizations that can all be uh, interesting for biomedical applications. However, uh, the outcome of uh, the exposure in vitro and in vivo to this material is unknown. So why are we interested in this? First, because there can be potential adverse health effects that we want to avoid. And secondly, it is very important to understand aspects of interactions of this material with the cells in order to be able to exploit to the maximum the potential that this material gives. So based on 30 previous years of the research on nanoparticles and also on carbon nanotubes and the other nanomaterials, there is an uh, uh, opinion that actually uh, the underlying mechanism of the cellular response to this material is uh, based on oxidative stress paradigm. So the intracellular levels of the ROS that are induced after treatment with these nanomaterials is increasing and cells can actually activate antioxidant defense in order to bring these levels of ROS to normal values. However, if this is not the case, the levels of ROS will continue to increase and this can lead to uh, activation of inflammatory pathways or uh, in the end to cytotoxicity. So as graphene oxide and graphene is new material, uh, it is important to try to correlate with the studies that exist on uh, nanoparticles and nano other nanomaterials. So our aim was actually to determine physical chemical properties of this material that is leading to potential molecular and or cellular injury. So our first aim was actually to correlate the cellular responses to the lateral dimensions of the geo. So with this purpose, we synthesized two types of the geo, uh, large with lateral dimensions between 5 and 15 micrometers, and small with lateral dimensions below 200 nanometers. Furthermore, we also were interested in the effects of proteins uh, that can absorb on the surface of these sheets. Um, especially this is important in in vitro conditions where cells are actually cultivated in the presence of serum. So we wanted to see the difference in the cellular response if the cells were treated with the material dispersed in the presence or absence of serum. So with this purpose, we had two experimental designs. In first of them, cells were treated with the material dispersed in the cell culture medium in the presence of serum for 24 hours. And in the second um, uh, design, we uh, treated the cells with the material dispersed only in the cell culture medium for four hours and we consider that during these first four hours, cells have time to, to interact uh, with the material and the downstream effects will uh, already take place. So considering the endpoints, we were interested to study cytotoxicity using several different assays, oxidative stress, and uh, activation of uh, genes involved in pro-inflammatory response. So to begin with, I will first show the results of the toxicity study involving large and small geo in the absence of serum. 
So first we performed optical microscopy observations to have a first idea of how the cells actually respond to the treatment with this material. And what we could see is that first there is a dose-dependent interaction of the cells with the material and they aggregate on top of the cells. Uh, after 24 hours in a dose-dependent way. However, we could not speculate about the uptake of this material based only on the optical microscopy. But there is a suggestion that, that the material actually is interacting. What was remarkable is actually the treatment with the large geo um, uh, in the absence of serum where we could see that already after the treatment with low doses of the material, cells seem to detach and to be removed from the support, which could be indication of the toxicity of the material. So, in order to confirm this, we performed the cell count using trip and blue, and indeed we saw that after treatment with the highest concentration of the material, we saw significant decrease in the cell number comparing to the untreated or the cells treated with the small geo. Uh, after that, we uh, focused on the cells that remained on the layer, so not the ones that were detached, and for this uh, we used an XC5 propidiumiodide assay, uh, which also showed slight but significant decrease in a dose-dependent way um, in cell viability after treatment with both types of the material. This was furthermore confirmed using modified LDH assay, also showing dose-dependent slight but still significant decrease. So then if we want to compare large versus small geo in terms of, of cytotoxicity, we could see firstly from these images that actually there is higher uh, toxic effect of the large geo comparing to the small one. Then we performed the same experiments with the, this material in the presence of serum from the beginning of incubation. And here we could not actually see the same uh, response, especially for the large geo in the presence of serum. And this was furthermore documented with the, the, the subsequent experiments. So cell count didn't reveal any uh, significant difference between the treatments. And uh, here, for example, uh, performing an XM5 propidium iodide, we could see the, the dose dependent decrease in percentage of alive cells only after treatment with the large geo. However, after treatment with the small material in the presence of serum, it was completely non toxic for the cells. This was uh, also confirmed with modified LDH assay. So, afterwards, we wanted to see how does this actually fit with oxidative stress paradigm. So, is there uh, increase in intracellular ROS production. And indeed, so we performed two assays in order to, um, because it is very well known that after performing uh, experiments and using different assays, uh, many interferences can occur. So for this reason, we uh, confronted a few different assays to see if there will be the same trend. So first of all, we did DCFDA oxidation, which is a dye that actually um, enters freely the cell, but after being oxidized in the presence of material, it becomes green, what we saw uh, in this optical microscopy uh, images, and also we measured this fluorescence using microplate reader. Um, then we used another probe and another approach, uh, so it, is, it was flow cytometry approach, uh, to, to confirm and uh, see if the, we will see the same trend. And the, the principle is the same. So dye enters the, the cell freely through plasma membrane, but then it becomes oxidated inside the cell uh, if there is increased ROS and it's non-cell permeable. However, the color is different. So using flow cytometry, again, we saw the same trend that there is increase in uh, intracellular ROS uh, production, especially after treatment with small and large in the absence of serum. Uh, and uh, so if we compare again, large seems to induce more intracellular ROS comparing to the small. And one more thing that was also remarkable from this result is that presence of serum seems to decrease the intracellular ROS production. So the, the third, like tier three from, of the, the cellular response to the material goes uh, to, uh, through um, activation of uh, pro-inflammatory response and activation of the genes that are involved in this. So as we performed 24 hours of treatment, we were interested in genes that are involved in the, the expression of uh, acute phase of the pro-inflammatory response. So we measured the uh, activation of genes uh, uh, that are uh, for interleukin-6, 1-beta, and interleukin-8. And uh, so what we saw is that actually here there, is, there was overall trend for um, all the cytokines. We did also TNF-alpha in parallel, but I didn't show it here. 
so we saw that there is uh, in induction of the pro-inflammatory response observed after treatment only with the large GO in the absence of serum. For all the other conditions of treatment, there was no uh, significant increase. So how does this fit actually with oxidative stress paradigma that I showed in the beginning? So if we, if we classify and take a look at this difference, so we had these two types of the material and two conditions of treatment. For the small geo that was uh, used and dispersed in the presence of serum, we saw very slight increase in intracellular loss that didn't furthermore uh, lead to uh, inflammatory response and subsequent cytotoxicity. However, the, the, the other extreme condition uh, was the, the large geo uh, in the absence of serum that had very in, uh, high increase in intracellular loss, leading to uh, activation of pro-inflammatory response and uh, subsequently to through the cellular death. Uh, so this is the first big message that we got from the study that we performed. And um, second one was that uh, actually uh, the absence of serum is significantly having an impact uh, on the cellular responses to this material. Um, so uh, in the end, I would like to thank to the colleagues that uh, are working in the lab with me, Dr. Neus Lozano Valdes and Mauricio Bujo, and also I would like to thank to Dr. Cyril Busi and Professor Costas Costrelos uh, for supervising me. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Um, I, I, just a technical question. Did I understand correctly when you did the annexin 5 assay for live or dead cells, apoptotic cells, did you look only at the attached cells, yes. not at the detached cells? And the reason for asking is that when cells undergo apoptosis, they detach. So yes. aren't you missing an, an apoptotic population potentially then? Uh, okay, so there are two reasons why we did uh, this experiment in this way. but. Uh, so first is that actually the material that remains in the supernatant and that you cannot actually remove. Uh, so you collect supernatant, but in, at the same time with your cells, you also have the material, which we saw that uh, can quench the fluorescence from propidium iodide. So I, in the beginning, I did this uh, setup, collecting supernatant, collecting the layer, and then I saw that actually it does not reflect what we see using optical microscopy. So then I separated and I saw doing cell count, which is complementary to the experiment with the propidium iodide and an exin 5. So I did uh, analyze cells from the supernatant for propidium iodide and an exin 5, and I have the, the percentage of dead cells with different cell types, which shows that there is 50% of dead cells, uh, but this result is only indicative because actually we know that the material did quench the, the fluorescence of the an exin 5. So there is indication, but actually uh, I, I cannot say the, the percentage, like accurate percentage of the cell death. So. Sure. You know, I, I understand that there may be interferences with the assay, but I, I think then you, you may still want to consider uh, an alternative method where you have less interference, but where you take into account both detached and, and non-detached cells. I, if I may follow up with another question, I mean, apoptosis is not necessarily the only um, type of cell death, and there are papers uh, in the literature suggesting that there is regulated necrosis or necroptosis uh, following exposure to graphene oxide. So you could test for this if you add apoptosis inhibitors or necroptosis inhibitors and then just measure cell death. Um, this could give you an indication of the mode of cell death. Have you considered this? Uh, well, yes, maybe for the future study, yeah, we will take this into consideration. Hello, my name is Melanie Cookie, and uh, I would like to ask you, what is a modified LDH assay? Is it an absorbent space, or is it a fluorescent one? Is it the okay. full, full lysis assay? Okay, so I have, uh, the. this is the method that has been uh, developed in the, in the lab. 
uh, before I joined. So this is also especially to, um, to avoid interference with the material. Okay, so this is the original one uh, that has been used with uh, non-carbon-based materials. And uh, it, it works fine, but when it comes to the carbon-based materials, uh, such as carbon nanotubes, and then we also can say the same for graphene, uh, there, some interferences were um, observed. So it's actually indirect. In this direct method, you are measuring what the cells uh, that are dead actually release in the supernatant. However, in the modified one, you remove the supernatant and then you have the cells that are on the support, that remained on the support, then you lyse these cells and actually it's inverse. So you measure the cells that remained as alive and with indirect you measure dead cells. But this is also because there is this step of centrifugation in the, uh, so, yeah, so there is a step of the centrifugation when you lyse the cells um, and the, uh, this is because you want to, obviously, to remove the, the, the material from the supernatant, wash and then lyse the cells and be sure that actually you excluded your material from the measurement. Okay, then so we're talking about the same. I just wanted yeah. to know if it's the absorbent space or the fluorescence yeah. one, because the fluorescence one is highly capable for the quenching. So, okay. Yeah, but Thank this you. is a, a, with this purpose. So. Uh, to, to eliminate the material in order to, to remove the quenching of the, okay, that comes you. from the material. Welcome. More questions? I have one. So you showed us at the end that the large sheets are bad, yeah? So they're about <laughs> one micrometer. So they are between 5 and 15 originally, but in the mm -hmm. cell culture medium, this is how they look like. So this is in the cell culture medium is actually much more. So, uh, the, uh, well, we didn't really measure the, dis the distribution of the size okay. in the cell culture medium, but already mm -hmm. from the picture we see that only in the case of small geo in the presence of serum, it looks homogeneous, while in all other conditions we see the, especially without serum, we see these clumps of the material indicating that the size is actually mm -hmm. much bigger. So your cells are not um, phagocytics, you have a, yeah, epithelial. A, epithelial cells. So do you uh, have any um, explanation why actually the larger, one, larger ones could be more toxic despite having less tendency to enter into the cells? Yes, so we, uh, there, there are studies that show that large geo is actually, but in the macrophages, mm -hmm. and it goes through the physical contact with TLR receptors that are for the down, with downstream effect of the cellular death. Mm -hmm. So B2B -B cells are having this TLR but we haven't explored what is actually going on. So is it this physical, physical contact with this receptor, or is it maybe the, the, that the cells are covered fully with the material and then this is what induces them to, to mm -hmm. for the toxicity? So we don't know, but we see that it's the, the size dependent, definitely, okay. the, the, this effect. So one more question, yeah. yeah. Why are you adding in their FPS and their less toxic and they're making a corona? And the, what is the mechanism? Yeah, so there are three, three possibilities that serum can actually have. So first, it can be corona effects, as you said, uh, with uh, uh, hiding this surface of the material and then having uh, influence on surface reactivity of the material, which is like second uh, explanation. But third is also modulating uptake and interactions with the cells. So, so for future experiments will show, does it actually have impact on the uptake or does it have influence only from this surface reactivity? It can be also extracellular, so it doesn't have to go inside the cell. But we have, so far we haven't, um, we did some studies for the uptake, but it is still ongoing. So it can be different reasons. Okay, so if no more questions, we thank Sandra.